What's up guys, Spencer here and I'm coming at you with 5 habits for self-improvement that'll help you in your 20s. Habit number one is meditation. Now, first of all, some people might have questions about what is meditation. They've heard a lot of things. They think it's kind of just sitting, clearing your mind, thinking about nothing. That's actually not true. So meditation, typically what you do is you sit down and you think about your breathing for 10 to 15 minutes. Now, that might seem kind of boring or useless, but consider the fact that every single day in society, we're forced to be doing something with our brains. So much so that multitasking has kind of become second nature. We have 50% of our brains here, 30% there, and another 20% thinking about something else. We're never able to focus on the task at hand, at least not very efficiently. So what meditation does is it trains you to focus on one thing for 10, 15, 20 minutes, and that one thing is your breathing. Now some of the benefits meditation can bring are focus and emotional stability, and these two are huge because especially in university, right before university or right after university, you want to be focusing on what your life is going to be about. You want to be focusing on your career, your relationships, your friendships, your hobbies, etc. You need to make sure that you have that focus so that you can actually get something done rather than procrastinating and going into these time-wasting activities like smoking way too much weed, drinking way too much alcohol, or playing way too many video games to name a few. Speaking to the emotional stability, I basically just mean that things that upset you don't upset you as much anymore. If you practice meditation every single day, you'll see in about a week that little things that used to really get under your skin or get on your nerves don't quite have that same effect. It's more easy to just brush off. And that's everything from the small little things like maybe stubbing your toe. Yeah, it's gonna hurt, but it won't bother you so much in the next few seconds. Or as big as losing someone that you really care about in your family or going through a big breakup. Meditation allows you to kind of find sanctuary without having to go anywhere. You can kind of just close your eyes, sit comfortably, and think about your breathing. And it can take you away to a place where you don't have to worry about anything else. You can just focus on the present, not get trapped in the past or the future. All right, guys, habit number two that I recommend implementing into your lifestyle is cold showers. And while you may not have heard of them as something that's as beneficial as meditation, seeing as meditation has been kind of thrown around here and there as something that can benefit everyone, the benefits to cold showers are actually twofold, and they're both pretty strong. The first benefit, which is physiological to cold showers, is that it actually increases your right blood cell count, making your immune system a bit stronger, as well as pushing the red oxygenated blood cells towards the internal vital organs, which will help with things like muscle repair. It's actually very healthy for your body. So the next thing is actually the psychological benefit. Getting into a cold shower is not easy, guys. I mean a cold shower. As close to ice temperature as you can get. As close to freezing as you can get. The reason why this is so beneficial is because willpower, imagine it like a battery. Every single time you do something, you kind of have to tap into your battery and throughout the day, it decreases in the amount of storage that you have. And so cold showers actually require quite a lot of energy to begin with to force yourself to get into the actual shower itself. However, with practice, you actually begin to develop it into a habit, just like anything else that's gonna come on this list. But what's important about cold showers is that because they're actually inherently difficult to do, being as they're cold and human beings typically prefer warmer climates, what we're doing is we're actually training our willpower to be able to be used when we want to use it. And this can actually affect other areas of our life. So for example, if you want to sit down and study or get to the gym and work out, we can actually force ourselves to do so because we practice on a daily basis using our willpower, especially in conjunction with meditation. Now we have the focus as well as this willpower. It's almost like expanding your willpower battery, so to speak. The third habit that I would recommend implementing in your life for some self-improvement would be setting a sleep and a wake time. So the thing is, is that if you want a productive day, then you have to schedule that productive day. Unfortunately, they rarely just happen. But for me, anyway, I can tell you that when you want to wake up at a certain time and you want to sleep at a certain time, you have to tell yourself when that will be. So the third habit is make sure that you actually set that time when you wake up and go to sleep. The next part is that it's probably better to wake up early in the morning. I'm sure you've heard the saying, early bird gets the worm. It seems like our society has been tailored to benefit early risers as opposed to night owls. The reason for that is because consider that work in the West starts at 9 a.m. School typically starts at 9 a.m., at least for a lot of high schoolers and a lot of university students as well. Now, imagine someone who wakes up at 8.30, gets to school or gets to work, and they're kind of waking up as they're getting to work. Their productivity isn't quite where they want it to be. They haven't had any sort of productive morning whatsoever. They have no incentive other than being at work to work hard. However, if you wake up at, say, between 4 and 6 a.m., which is kind of the window I recommend, that's normally where I wake up. I normally wake up about 4.30. But the thing is, is that if you wake up that early, you can actually get started on your tasks immediately, guys. And now another bonus tip here is make sure you set up what it is you want to do in the morning. The night before, don't just tell yourself you're going to get up at 4, 5, 6 in the morning. Tell yourself you're going to start doing something at 4, 5, 6 in the morning. Make sure you know what you're getting up to do, because if you get up aimlessly, that snooze button is right there, and you know, and I know, that you're just going to go and hit it and go back to bed. Make sure you actually have a plan, guys. Know what it is you 
you want to do and get right to it. And the only way to make sure that you wake up on that time is that you get a good enough sleep the night before, which means set the time you go to bed. Make sure you set that time and stick to it. Now this does require some accountability and some responsibility, but things like meditation and cold showers, the two things that preceded sleep and wake times on this list, you should experience more success than without them. So this is definitely a tip I would recommend if you're looking to start a business, be more productive at school, or make sure that you have a good study schedule. Now, the fourth habit that I would recommend implementing into your life for self-improvement is a little bit more contentious than the other three. NoFap. So NoFap is actually just the banning of three things. Porn, masturbation, and orgasm. So ultimately, it's not looking to say don't have orgasms, don't have sex. The main goal of NoFap is to eradicate pornography from your life, guys. There's so many studies showing that how pornography makes the viewer less interested in partners and have all these various sexual problems like premature ejaculation, erectile dysfunction, and just a general kind of anxiety throughout their life. You have no idea the kind of anxiety that porn can actually cause to you subconsciously, and that means without you even realizing it. So really, I recommend trying to go 30 days at least without watching any sort of pornography or without doing any sort of masturbation and see how you feel. This will be admittedly one of the most difficult things to do on this list, maybe battling cold showers for what's more difficult, but this is definitely one, rather than action to go and do something, it takes restriction. So you need to restrict yourself, and again, some of the other things on this list that encourage willpower and focus and those kinds of things, meditation, cold showers, etc., will help you with this goal. And this is a very important one, guys, because it's very easy to get sucked into the time-wasting activities. We've all been there, guys. So if you really want to change your life, this is a very important habit to get into. Get into the habit of whenever you have that thought of watching porn, turn it away. If you want to have some sort of sexual activity, do it with a partner. You do not need pixels on the screen for sexual gratification. And I'll do another video if you're more curious into the downsides of pornography and why you should give it up and all those sorts of things and different kind of configurations of no fat that exist. If you guys want that, just ask for it and I'll get it in another video. But for now, the fourth habit that you should get into is no fat. Ditch the porn, guys. Ditch the porn. Okay, the fifth and final habit is to start reading. Read, read, read read. Now CEOs from various companies including Bill Gates, Mark Zuckerberg, all the big ones, they all say that they read a minimum of two or three books a month. Now that's not that much. It seems pretty crazy if you haven't read anything or haven't been reading for a while, but it's really not. Especially if you did some things like I said, like set a wake and sleep schedule. Very easily just schedule a reading hour or a reading 90 minutes or whatever into your day and it's really not that bad if you just wake up an hour earlier. There you go, an hour of your reading done. Now obviously this is going to depend on what you like. Some people like fiction, some people like non-fiction, but what I will say without trying to hate is that if you do read exclusively fiction, I would recommend that you try and supplement that with some nonfiction. Learn about the world around you guys. If you're interested in business, learn about business, learn about marketing, learn about those things. If you're interested in biology, read about that. If you like scholarly papers, go check out Google Scholar, all these kinds of things. There's a ton of stuff for you to read. Personally, I like self-help. So if I were to recommend one book to you to get started with, I'd recommend Napoleon Hill's Think and Grow Rich. That's an amazing book. It'll help you with just general motivation, especially if you want to start a business or whatever, and you just want to begin to get the ball rolling. I'd say that's a great book to start with. But anyway, the final tip here is to read. Make sure you read every single day. It doesn't have to be a few hours every day. It can only be half an hour if that's what you're comfortable with. Start small, guys. You don't need to jump straight for the three hours a day or whatever. You can start small and see where that takes you and see how you feel with it. And honestly, guys, there's you have no legitimate excuse not to read because you don't need to go out to a bookstore and go buy a book if you don't want to or don't have the funds. There's tons of online books if you want to read. If you want, you can get a Kindle, Amazon, whatever. I mean, I use an iPad and all I have to do is highlight and screenshot and I can make a whole album consisting of information that's pertinent to me that I care about that has to do with my path and my goal and my journey. And I recommend you do the same thing. So if you have a tablet, you have absolutely no excuse. And if you have a computer, same thing, no excuse. Guys, one final bonus tip. Number six is nutrition. Make sure you get at least two vegetables and two fruits every single day, guys. Because if you want a healthy mind, then you need a healthy body. And if you're watching this video, it's because you want one or the other or both. So I recommend that you make sure that you do all of these habits, all five of them, but make sure you include nutrition. You can't train the brain if you don't include the food. That means you're having two servings of vegetables minimum and two servings of fruit minimum per day. Make sure you're getting this because it contains fiber and you need that because we all know what happens if you don't eat any fiber. So make sure you're having this because that way all these things can work together very well. You have your motivation, you have your focus, you have your willpower, all these things. This is how you build a better life, self-improvement. Now a quick little how-to on all the tips. Real quick as a recap, okay, we have number one, meditation. I recommend starting with 10 minutes a day every single day. Work your way up to 20 and if you can do more than once a day that's awesome but make sure that what you do is you set a timer you can use your phone make sure it's on airplane mode so you don't get any notifications and whatnot and make sure you set a timer for 10 minutes now don't check your timer don't open your eyes nothing until that timer goes off meditation means you're not scratching your face if you have an itch you're not licking your lips you're doing as little as possible because all you're supposed to be focusing on is your breathing yes you're gonna wonder did the timer break
fake or has it been 10 minutes yet? There's no way it hasn't been 10 minutes yet. These things are natural. This will happen, but you just got to go through it because eventually the timer will go off. 10 minutes a day, guys, every day. Number two, cold showers. I did mention that you should take about five to eight minutes in the cold shower. It will be difficult to go further than that, and I don't recommend that you go further than that. Five minutes will do great because all you have to do when you get in is stand there in the water and wash yourself really quickly. That's all you have to do, and making sure it's cold will definitely help you with your willpower because it's difficult to get into a cold shower. You're taking a place that's normally a place of comfort and warmth, and you're turning it into a really difficult willpower challenge. No! By doing this, guys, you will see the benefits in the rest of your life and how easy it is to optimize your willpower when you need to in the future. Number three, sleep and wake times. I did say wake up between 4 and 6 a.m. I think that's a great ballpark to aim for because that way you can get a lot of work done before you actually go to work, go to school, go to class, whatever it is. So make sure you get up between 4 and 6 and see how you feel. That means that you need to set a sleep time accordingly. You can't be going to bed at midnight or 1 a.m. if you're supposed to be getting up at 4 a.m., guys. Keep that in mind. It's about recommended about 7 hours is supposed to be optimal. You can definitely work off of six and eight on the upper range So definitely make sure that you are sleeping and waking up when you plan to because if you set the beginning and the end And you control the beginning and the end then the middle is a lot more malleable for you Number four was no fap I just want to point out that this works for men and women alike Look the way no fap works is from an evolutionary standpoint Our brains are wired to reward us for doing actions that further the human race if we're constantly tricking our body into thinking That we've just made it with uh, you know a hundred different people in a week or whatever It may be depending on your addiction to porn then of course you're not going to be interested in doing things Things like going out with friends or working hard at school or at work because you've already reached the end goal you've already you've already spread your genetics so to speak you've already continued the gene pool so your brain's not gonna give you that motivation to do these other tasks so I recommend going for at least 30 days absolutely no masturbation sex with a partner is fine don't shy away from orgasm I mean that's a whole other option I can make another video about that again but don't shy away from orgasm the goal here is to get rid of pornography and take a break from masturbation at least until you can separate masturbation from pornography number five was read guys make sure you're reading every single day if you want to combine all these habits together it's pretty easy wake up at 4 a.m. let's say get in the shower by 4 15 cold shower you're out make sure you have something to eat something with fruit something with vegetables then get to your meditation you do that for 10 minutes then get to your reading for an hour all of that can be done within two hours guys you wake up at 4 30 in the morning that's done by 6 30 you don't have to be at school for another two and a half hours if your school starts at nine there's a lot you can get done in a day all right guys so that's everything i have for today that's my top five habits for self-improvement especially in your 20s i hope that you're able to take something from this video and if if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section. Please subscribe, like, whatever you want, and I hope to see you again soon. All right, guys, have a good one. Stay motivated, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye, 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 bye.